Hey everybody, welcome back to my Star Wars channel. My name is David and today we're gonna do another book review. We would be honored if you would join us. Hey everybody, welcome back to my Star Wars channel. This is the place where I review my Star Wars collection, things I love about Star Wars, and one of those things are the vintage books. Um, originally, when I started doing these reviews, I said that I would get all the vintage books, the early books, these are the, you know, pre, pre books back from the, back from the 90s, and I said I would read the books, I would read them in order, okay, and then I would ask some questions about them, uh, chiefly, right, are, are they still good, do they still hold up, because when all of the new movies started coming out, people started saying, why are we writing new stories when we have a lot of these vintage books that had great stories in them, we should just use those. And so I had never read the old books and I was like, let's put that to the test. Let's read these books and see if they still hold up today. I think sometimes we have this idea, right? Or this memory of how great things were in the past. But uh, if we were to revisit those things, maybe, uh, maybe we might have a different opinion. That said, I haven't reviewed a book in a while, and let me tell you why. Because I haven't been very impressed. <laughs> I have not been impressed lately. Last place I left off was in the Timothy Zahn uh, Heir to the Empire trilogy. Uh, I wasn't really getting into that series, and I kind of felt like I need something to kind of pick me up and maybe get me excited again, and so I decided to jump out of the, the order and pick up the Bounty Hunter Wars and go through those because, as you can see, Boba Fett, Boba Fett, right? Boba Fett, favorite character, right? Of course, I mean, he's probably everybody's favorite character, but um, started reading these and just hit a wall. Just felt like, man, this is, this is more of the same. Just wasn't excited about these either, but I want to get into the review first. Let's talk about the Mandalorian Armor. Mandalorian Armor, this is from 1998. Author is K.W. Jeter. This is from Spectra Bantam Books. There's 387 pages. Um, the book begins with Dengar, the bounty hunter, searching through the wreckage of Jabba's exploded sail barge after Luke and Leia destroy it. And he's looking for, you know, things of value. And then he finds Boba Fett alive. Dum, dum, dum. Right? That was a big deal back in 1998. And then the book flashes back to Empire Strikes Back, like around that period where Boba Fett is a freelance bounty hunter and he's at odd with the Bounty Hunters Guild. And so there's another subplot here with the Bounty Hunters Guild and then another subplot about a gentleman named Quat of Quat. He's the Empire's chief subcontractor for military items and he's interested in the events that have occurred at Jabba's palace. There's also another plot with Bosk and Zuckus, also bounty hunters, who have been assigned by the Bounty Hunters Guild on a contract, and they're gonna go after this accountant who's wanted by the Huts. So Bosk and Zuckus pursue Boba Fett because he has taken the accountant first. And after Boba Fett arrives with his bounty, Boba Fett is given a new job, and that is to subvertly destroy the Bounty Hunters Guild from inside, and Boba Fett accepts. So we skip back to Dengar and Boba Fett. They're in a cave. This is, you know, in present time. Dengar then captures a woman who has followed him to this cave. And the woman's name is Neela. And she uh, explains that she was a dancer in Jabba's palace. But she's very sketchy. and She doesn't seem to have all her memory. Then they jump back to the past again. Uh, the Bounty Hunters Guild welcomes Fett into their organization. But Bosk doesn't trust him. Uh, Bosk is suspicious, and Bosk, his dad, by the way, is the leader of the Bounty Hunters Guild, and uh, he lets his dad know that he doesn't trust Boba Fett. There's another subplot with the Emperor and Darth Vader and Prince Shizor, who uh, they are trying to uh, also destroy the Bounty Hunters Guild. Meanwhile, Boba Fett plants a fake bomb on Bosk's ship. It explodes. Bosk ejects in an escape pod, and then he's stranded on Tatooine. Well, then Bosk ends up killing his dad to take over the Bounty Hunter Guild, but instead of destroying it, it fractures into two different groups. Skip back to Emperor Palpatine, Prince Shizor, and Darth Vader. Uh, again, they're trying to destroy the guild. So what they do 
is once they see that it's split into two factions, they end up placing a large bounty on one of its members, hoping to destroy it from within even more. Bosk and Zuckus and Boba Fett do a team up and they set out to capture this new bounty hunter. Uh, and of course, the Fett in the present time, he wakes up from his injuries uh, eventually in this cave and he teams up with Dengar and the girl in the cave to kind of figure out what happened to him. And that's where the book leaves off, kind of like with a big cliffhanger. And if that all sounded confusing, that's because it is. <laughs> it is confusing. Um, I felt like the stories were all supposed to come together. You know how you, you read about different things uh, through a book and you feel like, well, these are all going to mesh. These are all going to blend. I'm going to figure out why they're telling me this story. Never happened. Never happened. It really felt like this book was written knowing that there was a book too, and they wanted to come to the end of it and, and kind of tell you, if you want to learn more, keep reading. And so it doesn't even work as a standalone book, because if this were a standalone book, you'd be disappointed because nothing resolves, right? So not only that, but I just really found all of the monologuing and long dialogue Boring to read. There wasn't a lot of action in this. I had to labor through this book. I did not enjoy reading this book, but you know there's those books where you feel like, I've got to finish because it's got, it's got to get better, right? I kept hoping it was going to get better and it never did. So like I said, this is the first book of a trilogy, Bounty Hunter Wars, and it doesn't end. It kind of has a cliffhanger ending. The questions that had I had reading this book, all the questions that I had reading this book are still questions. They never got answered. And so as much as I didn't want to, I felt like, well, I got to pick up the second book, right? Because I'm sure all of my questions will be resolved in the second book. The second book, you know, is going to get better. A lot of times I really enjoy the sequel more than the first movie. Uh, I always like the second film uh, a, a lot more than the first. And so I was really hoping, okay, this was all the beginning, right? And now it's going to pick up and it's going to get better in the second book. Spoiler alert for my upcoming review, it doesn't. <laughs> so a couple questions I ask in my book reviews, uh, would I make this book canon? Uh, no, you can't make this book canon, especially now since uh, Mandalorian has come out and we've learned some new things about Boba Fett, so no. Uh, would I think this would make a good movie? Heavens no, this is a terrible, uh, terrible story, would not make a good movie at all. So that takes me to my last question, do I think this book holds up today. Do I think it holds up today? Uh, no, I don't. And I feel like that's, that's how I feel about a lot of these legacy books. I feel like we enjoyed them back in the 90s, but we were looking back through rose-colored glasses. We don't remember uh, the books in truth, and I feel like uh, the pacing on a lot of these books are slow. I feel like a lot of these authors uh, don't really know the Star Wars characters, and they just they just write generic characters and then just name them Han Solo and Princess Leia, but they don't talk like the characters we enjoy, especially this. I Boba Fett does not talk or act like we expect him to act in these books. Um, so very disappointed with this. So sorry if you loved it. If it's a childhood memory favorite of yours, tell me down below if I got it wrong. Tell me down below that you love this book and that I'm crazy for not liking this book. Oh, I gotta say one more thing. The title, Mandalorian Armor. No, nothing. There's nothing in this book about the Mandalorian armor. Nothing. There's Boba Fett barely wears his armor through this whole book. So why is it called the Mandalorian armor? Just to, just to draw you in, I guess. So yeah. Uh, look forward to my next review, Slave Ship, or, or, or not. I don't know. Hey, thanks for watching. May the force be with you. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.